This is Times Drive. I'm Joel Pereira and this right here is the 2014 Skoda Superb. As you can see, it hasn't changed much from the outgoing model. What has changed though are the circumstances of this car. Now considering that the Superb is neither very expensive or even very exclusive, it does have one killer feature going for it. This car has virtually no competition. When this version of the Superb was launched back in 2009, it was a bit of a hard sell. Ruling the roost was the Honda Accord, the favourite of aspirational business types and senior management everywhere. Toyota had the funky-looking Camry, Nissan brought in the Tiana, and a year later, Volkswagen decided to join the party with its globally best-selling Passat. But that was then, and this is now. And now, the Accord has been discontinued and so has the Passat. No one buys Tianas. The Camry is still around with a very high-tech hybrid option, but the only people who buy them are hotels and daisies returning from the US with the longing for the good old days. So what has worked for the Superb considering that everyone else who's tried has failed? Well, that's what we're here to find out. So under the sharpened bonnet, you've got the standard petrol and diesel engine options. You could either get the 2.0-litre diesel, which is the big seller, or the 1.8-litre TSI petrol, which is what we're driving right now. Now, this engine puts out a rather decent 160 bhp and 250 newtons of torque, which makes it nippy, if not exactly fast. Problem is that you've coax the power out of this engine, an issue you really don't have with the diesel. Now, this is a motor that comes to life higher up in the rev range, which is fine out on the highway, but a bit annoying in the city, especially when you're trying to dart through a gap in traffic. The car we're driving, the top-end petrol, does come with a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission along with paddle shifters as standard. And shift timings are decent, though improved dramatically should you switch to sports mode or take matters into your own hands and use the paddle shifters so thoughtfully provided. Now, though we haven't had any issues with the DSG gearboxes, we heard a lot of consumer complaints about DSG failures. And if you'd like to avoid the high-tech, you could always opt for the smooth-shifting 6-speed manual. Now, the good thing is that the Superb is no slouch in the driving department. The chassis and the suspension are identical to the outgoing Superb because I guess if it wasn't broke, there's no real reason to fix it. Now, driving this car at high speeds is actually quite relaxing and should you hit a corner fast, you won't be thinking about death. The ride quality too is pretty impressive and though you will sometimes hear but not really feel the occasional judder. Now, this car handles bad roads with style. That's all well and good, but considering that this car has been targeted squarely at the middle-aged man with a pot belly and a platinum card, do you want to be chauffeured around in this car? To answer that question, I have to stop and show you around. Oh yeah, absolutely. For one, it feels rich and understated and two, acres, literally acres of space. There's so much legroom around the back that you won't know what to do with it. Another nice touch are the pillar-mounted AC vents that are actually functional, unlike the low-mounted vents in other cars that threaten to make men sterile. Over in the front, you do get everything that you would with a car that costs this much. Parking sensors, sunroof and all-leather seats. And then there's a nifty touchscreen that controls the stereo and mobile Bluetooth. Weirdly enough, there's no USB port and that's a bit of a boo-boo because 1. Digital music and 2. It's always nice to play music from your phone and charge it at the same time because, let's face it, smartphones have batteries with a life cycle of a grape in the sun. There's also the boot, which is one of the party tricks. That's because this thing opens in two different ways. There's the normal sedan-like bootlet for suitcases and such. And then for better access while transporting a fridge or a body, you can also open it this way. That's kind of cool and would help tremendously if you need to make people disappear.
Now when we started this feature, we listed all the competition that Skoda had to face when it was first launched and how it is the last man standing. But there's one big reason for that. The Superb is a good car, but by no means outstanding. What worked for the Superb was value. The 2014 Superb has not been launched yet, but going by the price of the outgoing car, the Superb offers German levels of luxury as well as a somewhat prestigious badge, but without the tremendous price. Another big factor was the engines. The 2.4-litre petrol might work in North America with the Accord or the Camry, but in India, that just is a bit much. Skoda's frugal 1.8-litre TSI petrol and 2-litre diesel makes running costs seem cut price compared to its erstwhile rivals. Perhaps then the Superb's biggest competition will come from within its own house. We're talking about the all-new Octavia. Now, considering that the Superb's front end has changed to match with Skoda's overall design style, the front end of the Superb looks almost identical to the Octavia, with the exception of different LED running lights. The engines too are identical and with the Octavia's lengthened wheelbase, interior space is still less than the Superb, but not by much. Now, ditto with the gadgetry and luxury levels in the cabin. Now, we are waiting on the price for the new Superb, but whatever it costs, it's going to be difficult to beat a fully loaded diesel DSG Octavia at about 20 lakhs. We're moving on now, here's all the news from Planet Auto. So Jeep was almost here and now they are not. Two models were to be launched at the Expo next month, but as reports indicate, that might not be happening. According to company officials, they are committed to the Indian market and will launch it when market sentiments improve. For a company like Jeep, that makes sense, as the models being launched here were coming as CBUs. What that means is that they are likely to be a bit pricey. What that also means is that BMW and Audi would slaughter Jeep in the pricing wars. Honda Amaze gets a new variant this week. They're calling it the SX and it's going to fit between the S and the high-end VX version. The Amaze SX coming just as it does above the S version will feature all its features, including a stereo, mounted audio controls, height adjust, keyless entry and safety features like dual airbags, ABS and EBD. Prices for the new SX petrol will be 6.22 lakhs and 7.12 for the diesel, X-Showroom. Like 